Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'd first like to thank LabKey for having me here to speak today. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about how we use LabKey Server to uh, host, manage, and share our real-time open, uh, open source sharing of Zika virus research. So uh, who, who we are. So I'm here re today representing the laboratory of David H. O'Connor uh, within the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, we are part of the AIDS Vaccine Research Lab, which is a facility um, off campus which actually houses four uh, independent uh, private investigators that we are all involved in some, some way, shape, or form with infectious disease, re disease research. Um, personally, my role is that of a research specialist, and I primarily do bioinformatics analysis and software development for uh, streamlining workflows. So our lab has a couple of primary uh, areas of research that aren't related to Zika. Um, primarily, we are a non-human primate genetics uh, group. We work on non-human primate genetics um, as they relate to the genes, uh, the MHC, KIR, and FCGR. Um, in addition, we have researchers that work with HIV and SIV, SIV being a simian immunodeficiency virus. Um, we we as, as well have researchers that work in host, host pathogen interaction um, in non-human primates, as well as doing uh, discovery and characterization of no novel virus in non-human primates. And of course, lately, the Zika virus. So we've had a little bit of history with LabKey prior to doing anything with Zika. Our lab has been using uh, LabKey server for years prior to Zika, and some of the things that we've been using it for um, are an electronic laboratory notebook system in which we store all of our um, primary interpretations of data um, as well as our raw data that we generate from any number of projects. We also use it as a high throughput sequencing data management solution in which we um, store uh, and host uh, both the raw sequence data and the metadata associated with sequencing runs so that we can do historical retrieval of different cohorts. This is especially important when we do uh, contract work for uh, clients in which they, they want us to um, maintain records of doing genotyping for a number of years so that we can go back to it when, when need be. We also use a, a purchase, purchasing man, management module within LabKey, uh, just tracking purchasing of lab reagents. Uh, we also have a contract mandate from the federal government um, where we have to uh, share all of our, our data in a contract portal and put it out to the community at large. We also use the, uh, uh, the freezer and inventory module that's built into the default um, the LabKey installation. And finally, um, uh, uh, keeping and tracking of animal records, um, though this is primarily the responsibility of the Wisconsin Na National Primate Research Center. So the, 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 uh, the point of this is that we had primary familiarity with the LabKey server uh, system, and this greatly helped with getting our Zika virus data um, put into the system. So the laboratory of David O'Connor um, has been working with uh, setting up and uh, getting Zika virus studies going um, during the recent outbreak in the Americas. Um, little history that our group um, actually got kind of an early warning from some Brazilian coworkers that uh, we're noticing correlations between kind of the birth defects we now associate with Zika virus infection in pregnant, uh, pregnant mothers and uh, the presence of finding Zika virus. Um, this happened somewhat like eight, eight or nine months before the mainstream media got a hold of the fact that Zika virus was an emerging infection. So we were able to get a foothold in setting up the kinds of infrastructure to get studies going. So the laboratory is conducting studies with a, a number of uh, primary goals, one of which is to establish the natural history of the infection. Uh, second is to create an animal model of disease progression using rhesus macaques. And we do this using rhesus macaques that are housed at um, the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center on campus. Um, th and this is for the purpose of uh, characterizing kind of the viral dynamics as it happens with infection. And we're then able to do um, experiments where we monitor the animals uh, sequentially, which you just couldn't do in a human. Um, we also want to explore the role of Zika virus infection during pregnancy causing birth defects. And the uh, rhesus macaque model is well suited to that because you can infect pregnant rhesus macaques where you could never do that to a human. So we assembled a team that acquired the moniker Team Zest, which some people don't like because it sounds like soap. 
Um, so Team Zest stands for Zika Experimental Science Team. Um, and what that consists of is um, a number of different groups that either are on or off campus or in the United States or otherwise that do a number of different uh, key functional tasks, such as immunology work, uh, vector biology with mosquitoes and mouse model, uh, vir virology work, uh, collecting uh, viral load data from blood or different uh, animal f fluids, pregnancy and fetal development group, which is uh, the group within the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center, which actually takes care of monitoring the animal health and doing the kind of the ultrasounds and monitoring of the fetal health during Zika virus infection. We also have a number, a number of other um, groups. And of course, the most important data management, which I've included little icons for Josh and Brian Connolly here. So we, our, our team consists of a multidisciplinary team of scientists that we were able to rapidly assemble um, to address the Zika virus outbreak. This allowed for a rapid and expert interpretation of data, but also presents um, a significant challenge in aggregating that data and interpretations in terms of putting out meaningful conclusions to the general public and in terms of putting out meaningful conclusions in publications. We're, um, during, during the peak and still ongoing when we're doing Zika virus studies, we've had data of numerous types um, and formats being generated daily. Um, so on a given day, um, you could have uh, viral, you could have viral load data, immunology data, and everything under the sun all coming in with new time points that could be completely, uh, that can completely change your conclusion if you just took a snapshot of it. So we needed a way to be able to monitor it in real time. So we determined that, uh, we made the decision early on that real time data sharing was critical to addressing the public health emergency at the ongoing Zika outbreak for a number of reasons. Um, this was in a, a diver this is a generally a diversion from the traditional weight to publish model that many labs follow out of fear of being scooped for their data by a different group. Um, the real time, we felt that the real time release of data was important for public health officials to provide guidance to the public. Um, and an interesting anecdote of this was that at one point, um, uh, a couple of months ago, we were informed by the CDC that they were going to uh, use one of our conclusions from a recent study in a White House press briefing um, concerning it, uh, travel advisories for pregnant women. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, the open sharing of data reduces the number of, uh, an ethical argument it, um, for the open sharing as opposed to waiting to publish is that open sharing um, can reduce the number of uh, primates, the total number of primates used in these, these kinds of research and per perhaps prevent duplication and unnecessary animal injury. So our, our first uh, effort to that was setting up our a Zika sharing portal on our existing LabKey server, which houses the LabKey install that we do use for everything else our group uses. Um, so LabKey's, LabKey server study module is the central focal point of what uh, I am talking about with, within the context of Zika sharing. It provides a, cent a centralized place to store and display data being collected in real time. And as we can see here, um, we've since uh, we've since moved uh, the the house the hosting of this server to zika.labkey.com, which is a which is a labkey managed server. And the benefit for um, migrating from uh, hosting the data on our our and our server is that it removed the, the the need to have a dedicated IT staff to keep the server running at 100%. And, I'll, and so we benefit from a professionally managed server. It also allows other groups doing re, uh, Zika research to set up their own study portals in the same, uh, on the same server in the same place so that we can kind of build off of one another. So doing so has gotten a little bit of attention recently. So this is just a couple of uh, news articles I, I, I pulled off Google. Um, scientists report in real time on challenging Zika research, Zika researchers. Um, Zika Research released real-time data on viral infection study in monkeys. Um, at one point, uh, a couple of, a number of months ago, it was uh, we were having camera crews uh, in our building, perhaps every twice a week, um, collecting B-roll and, and getting interviews from senior scientists. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes this uh, amounted to uh, pipetting water into empty tubes in order to appear sciency. 
this wasn't to fool anybody. The reality is that it's just logistically infeasible to get camera crews into a, a BSL-3 controlled lab that has infectious reagents, so we, we made do. Um, I was, I was uh, spared from this because of, as important as it is to uh, fill out wikis and set up data sets within LabKey doesn't make for very good TV. <laughs> so how do we, how do we use LabKey server uh, technically to host this? Um, so I mentioned we use the, uh, the study module within LabKey uh, as our central focal point. So what we, how we have it set up is that we, as part of a, a study module folder, we have a master folder that we consider to be the, uh, the, the Zeek V master folder, which is then set to private permissions within LabKey. Um, so we use the access controls within LabKey to set that. The private folder then serves as the primary warehouse for uh, upload of data from uh, individual data contributors. So individual data contributors could be um, those generating the viral load data, um, which just generally consists of tabular data that comes straight from a machine, uh, immunology data, which is a little more complicated, um, and basic uh, animal health uh, uh, metrics like uh, blood chemistry and weight, all of which end up into the private master folder, which from there we uh, use the study modules publi publish feature to publish individual public folders. Um, these individual public folders are broken out by um, study design such that for any given uh, Zeek V01 or 2, there's a specific research goal such that the, um, the animals part of 01 may have gotten challenged with a different strain or O3 might have been a pregnant uh, rhesus macaque. O2 might be a different dose challenge. And um, we, so at any given time, these, all these subfolders are continuously being populated in real time uh, from the, uh, the private master folder. So the advantage of that, of, of this structure, is that the study module allows for the automatic propagation of data from the master study to sub-studies. Um, and that's all controlled by setting up participant IDs. Um, so the participant ID is also, we use an, a de-identified ID that um, uh, masks the actual um, animal identifier used by the, pr the primate center. And we do this for a number of reasons, but the most, the most important one is that we want to um, uh, avoid FOIA, Freedom of Information Act requests uh, for a specific animal that might be requested um, for that animal's whole research timeline. Um, so we, uh, LabKey has a feature that handles that uh, fluidly, and then we use that, those de-identified de numbers throughout our research experiments to then um, track the, uh, that specific animal for any number of studies they're on. Uh, a, a good example, um, an example of an advantage for uh, this, this setup as well is that Individual data contributors only have to be trained how to upload data to one place, um, and they can, and then th that data will then propagate out based on the participant ID within the studies. So it, it becomes a much easier task to to train um, a, a tech doing a viral load assay to upload tabular data as it comes off the machine to one spot, and then from there it's good. Additionally, centralizing the data means that passing spreadsheets through email with the latest data is a thing of the past. On uh, this diagram here is just an example of um, the complexity of some of the studies that we have going on at any given time. Right here, there's only six going on. Uh, we currently have 14. Um, but within those, those studies, there's some number of animals that all have different, um, different challenge doses at different time points that we're, we're tracking on a daily basis. So the, uh, the ability to do that within this framework of the study module is very helpful. So what types of data do we post to public studies? Um, the main type we post are um, viral load time charts, which are kind of the key data in describing the viral dynamics of um, infect uh, Zika virus infection in macaques. Um, so by posting them, um, we uh, use the, the time chart visualization uh, features to also track the, pr the progress of viremia over time. Um, and that's accomplished just through um, setting up a, a time chart uh, from a data set. We also track um, participant health data, such as animal weight and blood chemistry, using the same kind of time charts. And 
most importantly, ultrasound data. Um, provide the uh, lab, the study module framework allows for um, uh, publishing and linking of, of just basic uh, images, but also on top of that, we've written some custom queries which then uh, track the metadata so that we have a live tracking of how many days post uh, infection and how many days post conception are these images from. So that helps our, that helps our, um, our biologists uh, determine what, if any, uh, impact of the fetus is going on. Additionally, we, uh, we post immunology data, which um, involves, uh, can, it, can involve T cell counts measured over time or uh, flow cytometry, staining, and imagery. We also post sequencing data. So some of the, it was mentioned earlier that um, as soon as Zika virus infection was established as being a problem, people were sequencing the genome. So we also did that, um, sequencing the Zika virus genome to verify that our challenge stock that we were using was a relevant comparator for what was actually the circulating strain of Brazil. So that we knew that infecting uh, macaques with the, the Zika virus strain that we had in hand was a relevant comparator for what the disease progression would be. So um, uh, the uh, study module uh, portion uh, allows us to post the images along with text descriptions of what, of what the alignment, in this case, uh, a sequencing alignment is showing. Uh, the messages web part is a feature, uh, I think it's a general lab key feature that we use within uh, su sub studies that we use to communicate little stories of data. And the little stories of data um, are, are something that maybe it might not be core data like uh, viral load over time, but it's a uh, kind of more, more of one off uh, data collection efforts that happen for different, different parts of the sub studies like doing tissue biopsies in this case or, or thoughts by my boss. Um, what, this, what this helps is to communicate the context from which the data was generated. Um, one, one other um, mi uh, minor point is that um, using the wiki containers, um, we're able to post pre-formatted HTML and, uh, and images. And we, our lab has recently made a push to do a lot of data analysis work within uh, IPython or, or live Python notebooks, which then produce uh, graphs, in this case a heat map. But then we can use the generated HTML and source code to just drop it right into a wiki that preserves all the formatting. For um, do, c accomplishing manuscript writing, where it might, might seem counterintuitive that uh, sharing in real time helps aid your group getting your, being first to publish, what we found is that um, centralizing all the data, centralizing all the raw data in a place where everybody knows to look for the latest and greatest data has greatly sped up the process of generating figures and uh, data uh, tables for producing manuscripts. In this case, there is a Nature Communications article that's fairly recent from our group um, that was uh, being generated, it was being written basically in real time, in which case they were watching the viral loads climb and they were filling in the data points and the figures as they were coming off the machine. And with that, our um, our link to the, the website that we are using is zika.labkey.com. This is the LabKey hosted uh, portal, um, and this is what it looks like. And then after this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to a live um, screen of that and click through a couple of the features that are interesting. So this is a, the Zika open research portal. Um, this is the main page um, where we can see there are two, uh, two labs that have set up uh, project portals. Um, in this case, our, our lab, the Dave O'Connor portal here. So when we go here, our, um, we have an introduction and then a series of links to sub-studies. These are the sub-studies that are then uh, all, all joined together by a private master study. So within, uh, within, though, within these links, then we, we jump to the individual uh, uh, study, published study containers. And so within the published study containers, we have um, information about study design. We have information about the participants that were used. And then we have links to all the, all the data that we've made public and the time chart series for viral loads, time chart series for viral loads for a different fluid. So uh, an example is uh, Zeke VO3. Uh, Zeke VO3 was our first effort at infecting a pregnant macaque. Uh, in the, the pregnant macaque, we um, maintain um, uh, up-to-date ultrasound imagery um, with kind of little, with metadata that goes along with, with that ultrasound imagery. So for every, every week or so, 
we're, uh, we're, t we're taking he uh, head circumference measurements and femur length measurements and posting that to the web portal so that in the, in the, in the hope that uh, maybe researchers that have more experience assessing uh, fetal health can see these and maybe do a better expert interpretation of what they're seeing. So uh, this is the, me the messages web part that I, ex I spoke about earlier. Um, the messages web part allows us to tell little stories and context about the data. Um, in this case, it was a, uh, we, they were talking about doing a, a dengue virus infection um, following Zika virus infection to see about the viral dynamics associated with that. And with that, um, this is the team I'd like to thank. Um, there are many people uh, here to thank. Uh, our Dave O'Connor's group, um, uh, the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center, Tom Friedrich's lab, and of course, uh, lab key support, Josh and Brian, who without, without which could not have, this could not have been possible.